Hello everybody and welcome back to another Terraria modding tutorial. So today I wanted to just go over a few questions that people had um, about modding, namely projectiles. I think a lot of people have some misconceptions about them and I just want to explain some things about projectiles and how to use them. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my Riptide mod here real quick and I want to go into my projectiles. Let's go into the gel bullet projectile just as an example. And I'll also, let's open up the dot solution file. I have a lot of solution files open right now, if you could not tell. Those are for things that are completely unrelated. So let's first talk about the mod projectile class right here. When you create an item, you want to give it a type. Now, the type of this item is a projectile, a mod projectile. What does this mean? Well, this means it inherits from the projectile class. Now, the projectile class has both a default class and default parameters, and we like to call that the global projectile. All projectiles or all mod projectiles inherit from that global projectile, no matter what, all of them do. And say you wanted to modify every single projectile or every single mod projectile, you would then have to override the global projectile. Now that is a different class. That is not a mod projectile. That would be a global projectile. If I could spell, that's what it'd be, kind of like that. And you can see it even lights up green. But of course, this is not a global projectile. This is a modded projectile. So if you wanted to change everything about every projectile, you would override the global projectile. Okay, now that we have that kind of ingrained in you, that this is just an instance of a class or a struct for those of you who are familiar with C, we can talk a little bit more about the parameters. So when we say projectile.damage type, what we're actually doing is we're accessing a member of that class, or once again, for those of you who are familiar with C, a member of that struct. And if I type this out here real quick, let's just say, projectile dot and by the way the dot is the uh, member access operator okay and if you have IntelliSense enabled you can kind of scroll down here and see all of the different uh, members of the projectile class so we have the AI AI style which you might have actually kind of seen we were changing that before the alpha the angle from angle to which seem to be these look like they are functions and there is whether or not this projectile is an arrow if it's a bobber, which probably has to do with fishing, if I had to guess, and if it can be reflected, so maybe it reflects itself back at an enemy, uh, whether it does cold damage, and a whole bunch of these other things, like if you can just scroll down and see all of this stuff, like if it ignores water, hostile, hide, all these parameters that you can change that you would have never probably been able to guess without either looking at the source code or by at least looking at all of the struct members like I'm doing right now. So it's definitely worth looking at all of these to see what you can actually modify about your projectile. Because chances are, if you want to do something with a projectile, it's probably already been done before and there's no need to code that custom mechanic. It might already be there. So you can just kind of look around for something that'll give you your desired effect. So now you know more of what's actually going on when you are changing your projectile. This right here, public override void set defaults. And this is something that is gonna give you a lot of uh, help when you're modding. Like if I were to say, go to mod projectile right here, you can see this is literally where mod projectile is defined right here. It is just basically a type definition of projectile. And a type def is just like another name for. And you could even see all the stuff right here. And if we scroll down, you'll see a whole bunch of other definitions. Like, look at this. We saw, we saw this. We've even used this. I've used this before. Draw origin offset X. Draw origin offset Y. We have all these things we can change. And if you want more information on how it is actually being done by T Modloader, just control click on that class and you can see all of the stuff that's there. And it's going to save you so many headaches if you're trying to figure out, oh, what does this value return? Like, what does this mean? What do I have to input as these parameters? Just look at the actual name of the function or the override or the variable or whatever and it'll give you all the information that you need and if we scroll down even more you can see look at this on spawn set defaults right there there's the set defaults for our projectile this is where this function is defined right here and of course there's nothing there because it all inherits from a global projectile right now we are in the mod projectile but every single hook and every single method that you will ever use. Look, modify damage scaling, modify hitbox, minion contact damage, can damage, when the projectile dies. All of it is commented very, very nicely. It's very well documented, and it tells you exactly what you need to do. So I highly recommend doing this for everything that you don't understand, or if you want to do something, and you might think it might already exist, go and just look through all the code. It's actually not that hard. As you can see, these are just uh, function definitions. They don't actually do anything yet. There's the can hit NPC, the modify hit NPC, 
on an NPC and all these other hooks. So we're going to go ahead and get out of that now. But uh, if you ever want to learn more, just control click on that class right there. And that will give you so much information. Also, it looks like my code was uh, reformatted for some reason when I opened this file. That's fine. But another thing I also wanted to point out was the code for playing a sound effect now has changed to sound engine right here. So I know some people were asking about that before. I know it's not directly related to projectiles, but uh, if you want to play a sound, sound engine dot play sound right there. So with our newfound knowledge of projectiles, let's see if we can add our own custom gravity effect. Well, what do we know about a projectile? It has a velocity, right? And what is a velocity? It's a vector. What does a vector have? An X and a Y. If you want to learn more about vectors, I made a video on them uh, recently. You can go and check that out. I think it was the C sharp tutorial series. We can just say projectile.velocity.y. And what that does is we're accessing this projectile's velocity, then the Y of that velocity, and then we're going to set it equal to, let's just set it equal to zero. That's just an example of how you could set the velocity. But that doesn't really do us much good, does it? That just gets rid of all of our gravity altogether. So what we can do is we can just say plus equals like so, 0.2f. And just like that, you've just applied gravity to your projectile. Now, here's another very interesting tidbit about games. Typically, the 0, 0 origin of a world map is the top left of the game. And that means by saying plus equals, we're actually going down instead of up. And I know that's kind of weird for people who uh, maybe were used to coding in some other thing where the origin might be different, or maybe just the uh, coordinate system in general, the Cartesian plane. But this is basically how it works. So by adding 0.2f, we are applying gravity to our projectile every frame it is alive. And it is that easy to add gravity to a projectile. Say you want your projectile to kind of slow down, kind of like the, uh, what's a good example, like the dagger. Well, let's just say projectile.velocity.x times equals 0. Uh, we'll say 9.2f. Why not? And what that does is it will constantly lower our velocity.x until it eventually comes to a complete stop. And this is great for a, an effect like the dagger, like a throwing effect for an item. And I bet you if we command S here and we go into our Terraria and build and reload our Riptide mod, let's just do this just for the fun of it. We will grab our, something we don't already have it, our slimy gun. I think it's this one, right? Yeah, it's our gel bullet projectile. So we got to get some of these too. Okay. <laughs> you can see when we shoot our bullet, it kind of has like this uh, stopping effect where it uh, slowly will kind of just stop like that. And you might also be wondering, why is it still going up? Well, because we you forget that we uh, set this projectile.ai style equal to zero. So we would actually, in fact, need to uh, keep this bit right here. And what that would do is that would give us kind of like a, a cool velocity effect. And so you can imagine if there was a Y velocity here, you would get the exact same effect as a throwing knife. So if we add 0.2F to our projectile's velocity, we go back into our game, you should see, <laughs> that's exactly the effect that we thought it would have. We're throwing it up and it has like kind of like an arc. And this is kind of, this is pretty funny because we have our bolts bouncing when they hit a tile. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're just bouncing up and off the ground. I don't know if this would be a good idea for a gun. It's kind of questionable uh, for, for a bullet AI, but it's pretty cool maybe for something else. Uh, if you wanted, you could make it so that it also rotates in the direction that it's moving. That might make for a kind of a unique bouncy weapon, but I don't know. But that's how you can make like a, a pretty cool effect and modify the projectile's values for yourself. And I know this wasn't the kind of video that most of you were probably expecting, but it is very, very helpful to know, and it's going to make you a better modder, and you're going to be able to make more unique items like this. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to support my work, I've been recently developing a game called Earthward. I've been working really hard on that, so if you want to support that work, and also the animated trailer that I'm trying to fund right now, you can become a Patreon supporter with the link in the description, or by subscribing to the Discord. Either way, thank you all so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.